Okay, maybe you guys didn't like my previous video because you thought that order of operation question was too easy. In that case, take a look of this one right here. Of course, we are not going to use the calculator right here, but at the end, I'll show you with Wolfgang Alpha, all right? And let me tell you that, in fact, we'll end up to have a nice answer for this, okay? So if you haven't already, pause the video and give this a try. Okay, as you can see, we have square roots inside of cube roots. And of course, even though we have 7 plus screw 50, and this is 7 minus screw 50, of course, we cannot cancel this out because word of operation says so, right? Okay, so why is this hard? Well, of course, we have the cube roots. And is there a way to get rid of cube roots? Well, if you have one cube root, I can just raise that to a third power, ideally speaking, so I can get rid of that, right? Hmm. This is how I'm going to approach it. I want to raise to the third power, but I have to do it carefully and correctly. First, I'm going to call this to be a number, but I don't know what it is yet. Let me just say this to be x. At the end, if I can get the value of x, then I'll be done, right? And from here, I will have the equation. I can raise both sides to the third power. So let me do that right here. Take this to the third power, and then take this to the third power. Look at the left-hand side. We have a plus b. It's a binomial, and then raised to a third power, right? There's a formula we can use, and I'll write that down for you guys right here. When we have a plus b raised to the third power, you can use the Pascal's triangle as well. You can use the binomial theorem as well. But we can, we can also multiply this out three times if you like. Anyway, this is going to be a to the third power plus 3 times a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b to the third power. Okay? 1, 3, 3, 1. That's one of the entries from the Pascal's triangle. Anyway, this is my a. That's my b. Let's go ahead and do the work. So first, I will take a, the cube root of 7 plus square root of 50, and I will raise that to the third power. And we continue. We add it with 3 times a squared times b. So I'll put this down right here first. The cube root of 7 plus square root of 50, and then I will have to square this, and then I will multiply by b, right? which is the cube root of 7 minus square root of 50, okay? And then I will have to add another 3. And this time, it's going to be a times b squared. So a is just cube root of 7 plus square root of 50. And then I have to do the b to the second power, which is cube root of 7 minus square root of 50. Raise that to the second power. And lastly, I have to do b to the third power. So we add it with, oops, put this down in red. We add it with cube root of 7 minus square root of 50, and then raise that to the third power. Of course, because we're talking about equation, don't forget to put down equal to x to the third power. So this is equal to x to the third power, like this. OK? And now, what do we have? The beauty of this is that this and that cancel. And likewise, this and that cancel. So as you can see, right here, we will just end up to have 7 plus square root of 50. And at the end here, we have just 7 minus square root of 50. Now, I can legitimately tell you, positive square root of 50 can be canceled with negative square root of 50. And that's wonderful. Unfortunately, we have this middle things right here. But it's okay, right? Just believe in the map, just like Dr. Payam. We will take a look at how we can do this, right? So right here, let me just write this down. We have plus 3. And now, take a look of this. Here we have a cube root. Likewise, we also have a cube root. So we can multiply the things inside the cubes together, right? Let me just write down the cube root together like this. And you see that this is being squared meaning we have 7 plus square root of 50 in the parentheses, square, right? Let me write it down twice. Let me put this down as the first one in red, okay? 
7 plus square root of 50. I need to have another one. I'll write it down as 7 plus square root of 50 right here. This and that give us the square. And now I just have to put this down right here as well. So I'll write it down 7 minus square root of 50. Okay? And let's do the same right here. We add it with 3. And then let's open a big cube root. This time, this is only once, right? So I'll write it down right here in black. 7 plus square root of 50. This right here, we have two of that. The first one I'll keep in black, 7 minus square root of 50. But the second one I'll write it down in red, which is 7 minus square root of 50. Okay? At the end, this is plus the 7 and all that. And of course, this is equal to x to the third power that we had earlier. Okay, now, why do I want to do that? Take a look. Because this part is nice. Let me just keep it in black. Why? This is a plus b times a minus b. So that's nice. So when you multiply this out, it's just going to be the difference of two squares, meaning we get 7 squared minus square root of 50 squared. 7 squared is 49 minus square root of 50 squared is just 50. 49 minus 50 is just negative 1. Nice, huh? Likewise, what's this? Well, same is that thing. We also get negative 1, isn't it? Now, take another look. This right here is what we have, right? Let's do this first. We have 7 plus 7. So, of course, that's going to be 14. Let me just write it down here. And now, check this out. Here we have what? This is plus 3 times this big cube root. Here is negative 1. And you know, when you have a negative number inside of the cube root, you can just take that negative out. So now, positive times negative will give us negative right here, okay? And we have this 3 right here, and then we have the cube root, and then this inside is the only thing that we have left. 7 plus square root of 50, isn't it? Okay? Because this is the negative 1 that we have. For this part, it's the same situation. We have plus 3 times this. This is negative 1. We can take that out pretty much. So we will have minus, this is 3, and then this is the cube root. And then we have uh, this left inside, 7 minus square root of 50. Okay? And do we have anything else left? No, because we did the 7 plus 7 already. That's 14. This and that cancel out. And now, for the cube roots, that's what we have. All this together is equal to what? That's equal to x to the third power, isn't it? And now, what good does this do? Well, take a look. Because this right here looks really familiar, right? This too is just the original. And now we have to do it carefully. Let's write down the 14 first. If you look at both terms right here, both of them have negative 3 in common. So I'm going to factor that out. All right? And then you will see we'll have this left plus that because I factored out a negative. So let me write this down right here. This is the cube root of 7 plus square root of 50. And then once again, it becomes plus because I factored out the negative. And we'll have this left, which is the cube root of 7 minus square root of 50. All right? And this is still, of course, equal to x to the third power. And now what? This is 14. This is minus 3. And what's this? Well, this right here is our original x, isn't it? Right? Because if you look at this right here, this right here, this is that, and of course, the x. So we pretty much have, we pretty much have 14 minus 3x. So let me just write it down right here. Right? This is the x. Right? Let me just indicate this better for you guys. So all this right here becomes just x. And on the right-hand side, we have this equal to x to the third power. And now, let me move things around. You know, I can keep x to the third power right here. Let me move the negative 3x to the other side, so it becomes plus 3x. And then let me move the positive 14 to the other side, so it becomes negative 14. This is equal to 0. And now the question becomes, how can we solve for x from this equation? Originally, you know, 
this right here, it has to be a real number, right? Because in fact, you want to cube roots, so it has real number. <laughs> so we just had to find a real root for this as well, and just believe in the math, and believe in what I told you. We will have a nice answer for this. So nice answer means rational answer, right? The way to do it is look at the constant term. This is negative 14. And look at all the factors of negative 14, both positive and negative. So you are talking about, you should check the following, all right? Let me just put this down. X can be equal to the factor of 14. It can be plus minus 1, all right? I'm accounting for the negative already. And maybe two, you can also use 2, so plus minus 2. And what? 7 as well, right? And then, of course, we should also try 14. All this, these are the nice answers, right? Possible nice answer for this. This is called the rational zero, uh, rational zero, zero. Well, uh, just try. For example, one, you know one to a third power plus three times one. There's no way to get zero, so give up on that. Try two. Check this out. If x is equal to two, right? If x is equal to two, then we get what? We get two to the third power plus three times two minus 14, do we end up have zero? This is eight, this is six, this is minus 14. Eight plus six is 14 minus 14, it is equal to zero, so we're done. So x equals to two is the answer. That means the original expression is equal to two, right? So let me just write this down legitimately for you guys. When you have cube root of 7 plus square root of 50, and then you add it with cube root of 7 minus square root of 50, all in all, this is equal to just the number 2, OK? Just a number 2. And of course, we can keep going. If you would like, you can also find out the complex value of this. Because now you know x is equal to 2 is a solution, you will know that x minus 2 is a factor to this polynomial right here. Do long division with synthetic division so you can get the quadratic part, right? And then from the quadratic part, solve it by completing a square or quadratic formula, they can get two more solutions. But of course, they are complex, they are not real. Originally, we're looking for the real answer. And 2 is it. And now, let's take a look on what Wolfgang Alpha will tell us. OK, so now let's go ahead and enter the expression that we had earlier. And instead of the cube root, I'm just going to write it down as to the one third power. So I'll open the parentheses, and instead we'll have 7 plus square root of 50, and all this right here raised to the one third power, all right? And then we'll be adding that with another parentheses, 7 minus square root of 50, and then this time, of course, it's still also raised to the 1 over 3 power like this. And now, let me hit enter. And you will see that's what we have earlier for the input. But if you go down, hey, what is this? <laughs> Look at that. Wolfram Alpha gives us 2.62 something 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 plus 0 0.3587 something 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 I. <laughs> Where is the 2, man? Where is the answer that we got earlier? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, it gives us a complex answer, but it doesn't give us two. I don't know why, but anyway, you can trust me, the answer to this is actually just a two. Or if you don't trust me, just use a calculator on your own. And as you can see, sometimes Wolfram Alpha cannot give you the correct answer. You just have to believe in your math, like Dr. Payam. Anyway, that's it.